Today, waiting in Alder Hayes A&E with his mum is 10-year-old Casper with a troubled tibia. I broke my leg about a year ago, but recently it's just got really sore. This morning it got worse and I ended up here. Looks like that leg's in limbo. How did it happen? One year ago, it was a beautiful sunny day. Beautiful. Birds were tweeting. Tweet, tweet. Flowers were... Sm Dancing. Uh, yes, OK. And Casper was playing in the garden with his friend Magna. Ooh, what were they playing? They were running around blasting foam darts. Pow, pow, pow! Sounds like fun. It was, until Casper tripped over a tree root and broke his leg. Ouch! A year later, and that leg is still causing problems. And now it's started spraying out yellow stuff and now white chunks of gravelly stuff. That's no laughing matter, Casper. Best get that grim limb in to see Dr Ashok Lal Ramavak. So we need to examine the wound and see how it is. It looks horrendous. That's right, Mum. Gross alert coming up. When Casper first broke his leg, he had an operation. And doctors discovered he had a tumour which they removed. Can you wiggle your toes for me? To strengthen his leg bone, they inserted a metal plate. What, like this? Yep, that's the one. And Casper was also given a bone graft. A bone graft is a surgical procedure when bones need repairing or rebuilding. A very special material, a bit like moulding clay, is put into the bone. It holds the bone in place like scaffolding and encourages new bone cells to grow. Sometimes, like in Casper's case, the material can leak. It's nothing to be overly concerned about, but there could be an infection. So the doctor orders bloods to be taken. One, two, three, go. Yeah. And x-rays. OK, brilliant, that's great. We're all finished. If there is an infection, Casper may have to have surgery to sort it out. We're going to keep him in tonight to see how things fold up tomorrow morning. For now, Casper's got other things on his mind. Dinner and sleep. My thoughts exactly. Not yet, Zand. Find out later if he does need surgery. <laughs> in accident and emergency, nine-year-old Tamsin is waiting to see the doctors. It's my leg. It's very sore and it's swelled up. Oh dear, that doesn't sound good. When I done pee, that's when my whole leg went purple, green and blue. Let's find out exactly how this multicoloured mischief happened. Well, there's two parts to this story, Zand. OK, what's the first? Tamsin was in her Thai boxing class, sparring with her partner, Riyad. Ooh, wouldn't want to mess with her. I know, Zand. They both went to do a Bandai move, a flying kick, but their knees clashed. Ouch! That's not all, Zand. There's more. What? A couple of days later, Tamsin was playing hockey in PE. Who's winning? Never mind that, Zand, because as Tamsin's opponent whacked the ball, his stick accidentally hit Tamsin's shin. On the same leg! Ooh! Double ouch. Here to find out more about Tamsin's troubles is Dr Helen Stewart. If I try and move your ankle... It's obviously quite sore, Chris. Where did that hurt when I did that? Just down there. OK. Well, I'll stop it there, cos obviously I'm in a lot of pain and I think we need to get some x-rays. So it's off to get some snaps to see why her ankle is in agony. After a few photos, Dr Helen delivers the verdict. So I can't see any breaks on the bones, but because of the pain that you're in, we're going to treat you the same as we would if you'd broken something. OK. Which means... On the leg. No. <laughs> Hot is another name for a plaster cast, and I don't think it's what Tamsin was hoping for. No sports for a little while. Oh my! And I know. No Thai <laughs> boxing and no. <laughs> the cast will make her more comfortable. It'll help the pain, help her to heal. Tamsin's having a back slab, which supports the back of her leg and allows for swelling. If you're so I think we've got a hot star on our hands here, Zand. Hospitals are good. Hospitals are bad. And they put me in a fight and I'll be good to go. Tamsin's got talent. She'll need to come back for a checkup on that painful pin. Find out later how she gets on. <laughs> back in accident and emergency, Joanna is waiting for news of her x-ray. Let's find out how she's getting on. Earlier, 15-year-old Joanna was rushed to hospital in an air ambulance. Joanna was walking across the road when all of a sudden a moped came along and knocked her over. Joanna was in a lot of pain and was sent down to x-ray to see if she'd broken any bones. Dr Shirley Mulvaney takes a look. 
So this is the x-ray of what we call the femur, which is the big bone of the leg. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth. There's no breaks in the bone. So this is the pelvis. Seeing that all the lines are nice and smooth. The last x-ray we did was a chest x-ray. And we have a very good look at the ribs because her chest was so sore. And you can see they're all nice and smooth. There's no cracks in any of them. You can also see her spine here. And if you look at the bones, they all look okay. And everything's absolutely fine. Well, that's great news for Joanna. With all serious injuries ruled out, Dr Shirley works through every part of Joanna's body to make sure there are no outstanding injuries. Fantastic. So you got the all clear from everything else. OK, everything looks fine. You're, you're still going to be a bit sore in this leg. So it's what we call a contusion, and that means that the muscle is bruised. So we'll give you some calpol and some Nurofen. OK, and then um, if you're OK in a couple of hours, we'll send you home. Okay. So, nearly home time. How are you feeling, Joanna? I feel a bit tired because they give me some paracetamol to not feel the pain. Well, with plenty of rest, we hope you'll be back to 100% soon. Bye! <laughs> Waiting to be seen by the doctor is 10-year-old Isla with her mum. I've hurt my wrist here and it's really sore. She's doing a great job of elevating her hand with that hoodie. I wonder where she got that from. I was watching a few episodes of Operation Ouch and I saw it, so I tried it and it worked. Excellent work! You could be a doctor at this rate, but how did it happen? Isla was on holiday with her family in Sherwood Forest. Ooh, home of Robin Hood! That's right, Zand. I can picture it now. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Actually, Zand, Isla was playing hide-and-seek. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. No, Zand, she was with her friends, and there were no horses. She was at a leisure centre in the forest, when all of a sudden, she jumped onto a stool and fell off. Oh. And look, she's landed on her wrist. Ouch! It's straight down to X-ray for Isla to get some pics of that jarred joint. OK, Isla, all finished. With the X-rays out of the way, here to look at her hurt hand is Dr Daniel Murray. Let's have a look. Let's roll that sleeve right up, OK? Dr Daniel checks to see where Isla is most sore. Did you win at Hide and Seek? No. No. Well, that adds insult to injury. Make a fist from me, tight as you can. It really hurts down there. Hurts down there. OK, and straighten it out. Is that hurt? I know you've been very good. OK, and understand you've been around for an X-ray? Yeah. Well, we'll get your X-ray and I'll pop back and have a chat with you and Mum, OK? OK. All right. So what's the diagnosis, Doc? Just round about here is where she was tender, and that looks completely normal, OK? You look down there to see if there's any sort of steps or breaks in the bone, and I can't see anything obvious there. OK, so to me it looks like a, a normal, normal X-ray, so she's most likely just sprained her wrist when she's, when she's fallen on it. There are 13 bones in your wrist. Between these bones are ligaments. They're like strong elastic bands which connect bones to one another. When too much pressure is put on a part of your body, like falling on your wrist, these ligaments can get stretched, twisted or torn. It's called a sprain, and this is what happened to Isla. She's given it some rest, OK, and regular painkillers. Do you do sports at school? Yeah, we do PE. We do PE, OK. I'd probably give that a miss for the week, OK? just to give it a chance to rest, all right? Isla doesn't look overly happy about that, Zand. I'm sad I'm not allowed to do dance and um, sports. And have we learned any lessons from this? Don't jump on a chair. <laughs> we'll bear that in mind. Bye, Bye Isla! <laughs> How much does the average adult skeleton weigh? Is it as much as A, one car tyre, B, five BMX bikes, or C, 15 bricks? The answer is A, one car tyre. Our skeleton only makes up about 15% of our overall body weight. The rest is our muscles, guts and blood. And talking of skeletons, now it's time for Investigation Ouch. So what do you think the inside of a bone looks like? This is an animal's thigh bone, and I'm going to cut it in half and show you. You can see how amazingly strong bone is by the fact that I have to use a saw to cut through it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. So it looks like rock, but actually, your bones are as alive as any other part of your body. Inside the bone is a web of fibres, and that's what gives bones their amazing strength. 
These spongy fibers can absorb lots of pressure, meaning our skeleton is one of the toughest parts of our body. So bones are incredible, but they're also incredibly complex. And in here, engineers are growing them. Meet engineering expert Dr. Michelle Oyen. She's so interested in the structure of bones that she's built these robots made out of Lego so they can make artificial bones in a lab. So Michelle, why are bones so amazing? Bone itself has really fantastic physical properties, especially for something of its weight or density. It's really stiff, it's really strong, and it's really tough, resistant to breaking. So Michelle, what are you doing here? We're dipping a screw into four different beakers. Two of them just have water, and the other two have some protein from your body, and also some calcium in one jar, and in the other jar we have some chemicals called phosphate. So the little piece of metal there is being dipped in these liquids, but you're getting a solid bone out of it. Yeah, it's forming, it's growing itself as we dip, so we go over and over and over again, and the layer gets thicker and thicker and thicker. So why are you doing this? For surgeries, you could take a screw, which are used in surgeries when you have broken bones to hold your bones together, but the biological cells in your body don't really like the metal. And so if you put a bone coating on the screw, then those cells would basically not see the metal. But Michelle is an engineer and thinks she can take her homegrown bones and make something much more spectacular. We're interested in building things, and so we think it's got a lot of applications for maybe making skyscrapers. That's amazing. You're actually taking the kind of inspiration from the human skeleton to do something completely different with it. Absolutely, and it makes sense because we've evolved over millions of years, and this is the structural material that holds us up. So it absolutely makes perfect sense that we might be able to make new things where it's holding them up. In fact, remember the web-like pattern of fibres we saw inside the bone earlier? Well, it's this same pattern which was the inspiration behind the structure of a very famous landmark, the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Isn't it amazing to think that one day we could actually be living in buildings made out of bone? But these are small beginnings, and after 24 hours, this is the result of the robot's work in the lab. So it really looks like a real bone, doesn't it? Yep, because it's made of the same stuff. This tiny bone is the final product, and it's almost exactly the same as the bones in your body, but there's one crucial difference. It's not alive, it's inanimate. The bones in your body have living cells in them that allow them to grow and mend if you break them. Yeah, man. Ouch. Medical teams always expect the unexpected. Let's see how they deal with this patient. This is nine-year-old Ellie, and she's in hospital with a painful wrist. I was wearing um, high heels, like that big. Go on. They're my sisters, I love them, they're purple, and they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah, got it. They sound fabulous. I had one, and my other mate had one, and me and my mate was running, and I was trying to chase after my mate, and then we fell. Hang on, who had what on? Let's get this story straight. Ellie was at home with her friend, trying on clothes. Is that a sandwich? Yes. Then Ellie spotted her favourite dress-up item, her sister's purple high heel shoes. Fabulous. So, she put one on. Uh, hang on, her mates put the other one on. Yeah, don't ask. And then they ran down the street. Uh... Don't ask. <laughs> when all of a sudden... Watch out! Ellie tripped and fell onto her hand. Ouch. This is how I ended up in the hospital. All because of the high heels. But they were fabulous. And purple. Anyway, let's meet Dr Mark Ansell. He's the man to sort that wrist out. So, what's happened? I was in my sister's high heels. I was running down the street and I fell. Mind if I have a little look at you? Yeah. Oof. So, where's it hurt? It, like, round here. Dr Mark will need to examine Ellie's hand and wrist thoroughly to find out just what the problem might be. I'd say the problem's running in high heels. You mean heel? She only had one on. That's the sore right here, where I'm touching yeah. my finger. The rest is kind of OK. Um, and a little bit here. Yeah. OK. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is there's a little bone called the scaphoid, yeah. and she's a bit tender on that. I'm just going to look at the x-rays and see if there's anything that we need to fix. Is that OK? The human hand is made of 27 bones. 
Your fingers alone contain 14 bones called the phalanges. And then there are five metacarpals stretching through your palm and eight carpal bones in your wrist. And this is right where Ellie is feeling the pain. The bone that I was a little bit curious about is this one here. It's called the scaphoid. It doesn't appear to be anything there. And there's no gross deformity, so that there's, there's not a particularly obvious break. It's good news for Ellie. OK, so I've had a look at the x-rays, and I can't find any obvious break of the bone or anything like that. Uh, in some circumstances, there can be a little break that you can't see in the first 24 hours. But at the moment, I, I, I think that's unlikely, but we're going to go on the side of caution. So, to help Ellie's hand heal, she's getting a scaphoid splint to wear. You wouldn't happen to have that in purple, would you? It's just a support uh, to hold the thumb in a nice position. I'm just glad that they give me this so this might make it better. Splinted up, Ellie can head home in some nice, sensible... <laughs> Our next patient's day was turned upside down by a bizarre accident. Better. Let's go meet her. We're at Liverpool's Accident and Emergency, where 12-year-old Carmen has a jaw that's giving her jib. What's the problem, Carmen? Um, I dislocated my jaw while eating. Oh, yeah. It is looking a bit wonky. How did you do that? It was lunchtime at school, and Carmen was with her friends in the canteen. Gosh, there's a long queue, Chris. I know, Zan, but don't worry, it's moving quickly. For you? But what was she getting for lunch? A triple-decker BLT? Nope. A jumbo pineapple? No, Zand. A bread roll. With a burger in it? No, Zand. Just a big, white, crusty bread roll. Oh! And when Carmen bit into it, she dislocated her jaw. Ouch! Are you sure there was nothing in that bread roll? It had butter on it. Hmm. I don't think we can blame the butter. Best get Dr. Shrute Messerhel to have a look. Can you open your mouth at all? No. no. Oh dear. That's about as much as you can do. Yeah. I'm just going to have a little look in. And it's clear that her jaw is dislocated, it's out of place. And what I need to do is relocate her jaw. I need to put it back into place. Inside your head are 22 bones which make up the skull. And two of them are in your jaw. There's the mandible, which is the largest and strongest bone in your face. And the maxilla. They're linked together by a hinge which allows you to open and close your mouth. And Carmen's hinge has become unhinged. Dr Shrook needs to get to grips with that sore jaw. I'm going to have to get on top of her almost and push really hard down and back. This may look uncomfortable, but Carmen's had painkillers, so it won't hurt. Ooh. Good girl, good girl. Really Try not to bite me. Yeah, Carmen. She's not a bread roll. Well done. Does that work, Doc? Good girl. Bite? How's that? Better? Yeah. OK. Yay! That's what she usually looks like. How do you feel, Carmen? I feel sick after that, cos she was, like, pushing, and it felt like it was going to crack the oar away. And a quick x-ray shows that Carmen's jaw is A-OK. -okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to let you go home. So no big burgers or bread rolls or anything like that. Nothing hard, nothing that you need to really, you know, use your jaw for. What are you going to eat now, Carmen? I don't know. Bread rolls are, like, the only nice thing. Hasn't that bread roll taught you anything? Bye! Bye.